Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for December 1st, 2022. Today I'm going to focus on two prime examples of why much of the world's population is turning away from the unipolar order dominated by the U.S. and NATO and is looking for an alternative. I won't be talking today much about the financial aspects of this, but the strategic and why we need a new strategic architecture that takes away the power of those who insist that there's only one way to do business, one way to run an economy, and the, the sheriff in town is going to enforce it with military power. So let's start with what happened in Bucharest yesterday, the NATO foreign ministers meeting. This was a discussion of permanent war. The denunciations of, of Putin uh, and Russia continued nonstop at the same time, they laid out a strategy for permanent war because their intention is to destroy Russia as an alternative to the unipolar order controlled by the U.S. and, and NATO on behalf of a destruction of national sovereignty. Russia is opposing that, as is China. And so the decision was made to increase the flow of weapons with all the talk about unity, we're all in it together, and so on. Now, there are interesting aspects to it. Stoltenberg, the NATO general secretary, admitted that tens of thousands of Ukrainian soldiers and militia have been trained by NATO special forces and military since the 2014 coup. So it's not as though they didn't know what was going on with the killing in the Donbass by the Ukrainian army or the anti-Russian uh, trajectory of, of Ukraine. They were not only there, but they were working with it. They talked at the Bucharest Foreign Minister's meeting about upgrading air defense, about providing longer range weapons that can extend into Russia. And then they had a section on rebuilding Ukraine's infrastructure. They also spent some time talking about going after China as part of a global NATO perspective. Now, this is complete and total hypocrisy. All the blame is placed on Putin. No recognition that the West's anti-Russian policy since 1991 had anything to do with Russian concerns for their security. They accuse Russia of not being willing to negotiate. Well, what they mean by negotiations is surrender. The Russians aren't going to do that. There were repeated warnings to Zelensky in the early part of the war not to surrender. And one of those was delivered by Boris Johnson on behalf of NATO. Then there was a discussion of rebuilding infrastructure and, and making Russia pay for it. Well, how about the infrastructure destroyed by U.S.-NATO wars against Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya? How about funds to Serbia for the nonstop bombing in 1999 of that country by the U.S. and NATO? Now, while they were there... In meeting in Bucharest, there was a European Commission meeting in, I believe, Brussels, where the discussion was about setting up a UN-backed specialized court to investigate war crimes committed in Ukraine. And of course, they, by that they mean war crimes committed by Russia. Von der Leyen said the European Union will work with international partners to get the, quote, broadest possible international support which basically means the G7 and the Five Eyes, to establish this while continuing to work with the International Criminal Court, which, by the way, the U.S. is not a member of. Von der Leyen also said they're going to demand that frozen Russian assets, that is, assets stolen from Russia by, that are in the U.S. banks, be used to rebuild Ukraine. Quote, Russia and its oligarchs have to compensate Ukraine, she said. We have the means to make Russia pay, unquote. Sounds a little like Joe Biden when he said that, don't worry, we know how to stop the Nord Stream pipelines. Now, while this was going on in the EU, Ukraine's first lady, Zelenska, was in London, where she addressed members of the British Parliament. And she said that in addition to military victory, Ukraine needs justice. Well, what about the Ukrainian citizens in the eastern part of the country don't they need justice also? Does she not see the violation of the Minsk II agreement as an unjust policy? And she went on to call on the British 
to lead the effort to prosecute senior Russian officials modeled on the Nuremberg Tribunal. There's an irony here, isn't there? The Nuremberg Tribunal was set up to try Nazi officials after World War II. Where are the Nazis in this? The Nazis are in the Ukraine Security and Defense Forces. So once again, we see gold medal style hypocrisy coming from the European Union and from their Ukrainian ally. Now, you could ask this as well. Where were these EU officials when wars were being launched on questionable or no evidence? Why no war crime trials for Tony Blair for what he did with Iraq, for George Bush and Dick Cheney? What about Libya for Hillary Clinton, Cameron and Sarkozy? What about for the Israelis for their murderous treatment of the Palestinians? How about the Saudis for what they did in a civil war in Yemen? In all of these situations, the, the ground, the, the survival of people on the ground is threatened by the continuous application of sanctions, which cut off funds needed for food, for water, for medicine, and so on. Large numbers of people are dying and are facing starvation because of U.S. and NATO policy. Many, many more than have been killed in the war in Ukraine have died because of the U.S. and NATO. No answer for that. No one even asks the question. And that shows you what the problem is in the West. Now, in the meantime, European economies are being destroyed for the benefit of U.S.-based financial conglomerates in big oil, because the prices have quadrupled for the gas and oil deliveries in Europe, uh, the military industrial complex, the, those companies that produce weapons are, are getting a huge bonanza. And then let's remember the great alliance between the U.S. and the European Union. Remember at the time of the Maidan coup in February 2014, when a telephone call was inter intercepted between Victoria Nuland, who then and now is a top official in the State Department, and a hardcore neocon warmonger, she was talking to Payet, the U.S. ambassador to Kiev, and she demanded that Yatsenyuk, Yats, be installed as president after the coup. Yats is our man, she said. And Payat said, well, the EU won't like that. And Newland said, F the EU. I'm not using the exact word that she used because she has a potty mouth. But that's what she said. The great alliance dictated by Washington and London to the European Union, which the European Union members are lying down on the ground uh, in supplication for Western support. So this raises the question then once again, with this level of hypocrisy, where's what's going to lead to an end to the war? Will it be a financial collapse in the West, which is fast approaching? Will it be the abandonment of the uh, rules-based order by much of the world? that's looking for the Asian perspective coming from China, Russia, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the BRICS, and so on? Or will it be nuclear war? Well, that's why I'm calling on you to engage with me and with our organization in a dialogue. I've posted the last couple of days the 10 fundamental principles drafted by Helga Zeppler Roosh to discuss how we get to peace. Some of you have already commented on these. Uh, I, I want more. I want to take this up in the Friday questions tomorrow. What do you think of these principles? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Will you organize with us to make sure these are realized? Because you're not going to get peace within the realm of the geopolitical order which exists today. This is an order that benefits billionaires and defense contractors and global conglomerates over and above the interests of ordinary people in nation states. And that's why they're trying to strip away the sovereignty of nation states with the World Economic Forum policy, the Klaus Schwab policy. This is not new with Schwab. This has been the policy for years from the so-called globalists. They're not interested in global economic prosperity. They're interested in looting the countries of the world and the people of the world to feed into their own personal profits. That's why some of them are billionaires now. So I'm going to post this again. I'd like people to read through these 10 principles, 
and discuss them. Send me emails with what you think. If you support it, if you have agreements, if you have disagreements, and what you can do to extend this debate into the general public. So you can send me your, your comments or questions at harleysch at gmail.com. And let's have this discussion, and not just between you and me, but between you and all your friends. What's at stake here is whether we're going to have a controlled destruction of the world economy with massive death resulting, or a nuclear war, or whether we can get cooperation to establish an era of peace and justice. So let me hear from you, harleysch at gmail.com.